So much of the conversation is centered around game development and how it all works. But in my own opinion, I think it's something that everyone or anyone who wants to jump in can do so. Now, regarding Gotham Knights, most of you know that one of the reasons I actually want to play this game is because I want to take a look at it from a development perspective. And I thought, why not start before the game releases? Since the devs don't want to give us a demo, maybe we can get a slice of what the game could feel like. I'm just joking. The whole demo conversation, I understand. I get it. But in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through how I was able to make a small prototype version of the Mystic Leap ability that is to be featured in Gotham Knights. Now, this is an ability with Red Hood. And when the developers did a skill and ability showcase, we got to see a few things about this particular ability. Now, first of all, in May, we saw that Red Hood actually had the ability and it almost broke the Internet. And then sometime in August, when we got the skill showcase, we saw that it is actually a heroic traversal ability that you can activate by holding the right trigger button while you're in the air. So I decided I might as well give this a shot in order for me to be able to at least check and see if I'm able to think through how this particular mechanic would have been implemented in a small degree. The very first thing that I did was I started to brainstorm as to how a character can jump in the air by using the air as their landing pad and as their launching pad. This is something that was quite interesting. So I started to research how to actually make a jump pad. And eventually I was able to figure it out by using a physical object or a physical asset in order for me to do this. So exactly the details of what I did was I created an actor here in Unreal Engine. The actor, I called it um, something along the lines of Spirit Pad because apparently that's what the developers are trying to name it. So I just gave it that naming convention for this prototype. And inside of this Spirit Pad, what I did was I created a physical object, a cylinder that I scaled down to what this is. And then I added a box collision around it. For those of you who know anything about collisions, they are used for all kinds of reading between two different objects or two different elements so that you can pass code or fire off events whenever both of them would collide. And then I use the Epic Games third person character setup, which is there in Unreal Engine, or I guess I should say the Unreal Engine third person character template. This template is actually quite favorable for quick prototyping because it already has a character. It already has code. It already has a mesh. It has an animation blueprint and all of that stuff already done for you. And all of your inputs have been programmed by default in here. So you don't have to go back and start programming this and you can just skip all this and then jump into your programming of your character. So having my jump pad and having my character, it was immediately good to go. Now, in that jump pad mechanic, all I had to do was pretty much send some code that whenever my character would interact with this jump pad, then I wanted my character to launch into the air at a certain distance or whatever it is. Now, this code is actually very fun to write. So what you need to do is basically use your component overlap. You check to see if your character that it's overlapping with is your player character. And then if that's the case, then what I wanted to happen was I wanted to launch the character. Now I know there's a node here that I haven't explained and I'm going to come back to this node. So I launched the character about 900 units into the Z axis. Basically, my character is able to hop in the air. Now this node that's here is a node to be able to spawn a visual effect, a particle system of some kind in a sense, just to show that we're actually doing this mystic leap. If you notice at the Gotham Knights reveal event, when they actually first showed Red Hood doing this, you could see that as he landed on this so-called spirit pad that he was generating with his soul energy, he could pretty much just generate some kind of green beams that was actually emitting far away from him. In my case, I was able to find, and this is where I got to spend the $14, uh, you know, on buying myself a pack that was designed and developed by someone who was a visual effects artist and was actually put on the Epic Games Marketplace for sale. The character that I use is a free character. I can't remember where I got the character from. I think Epic Games made it free for everyone. So you can go on the Unreal Engine um, Marketplace and look for the free items and get yourself some free stuff. But the visual effects pack was actually pretty cool. It's a visual effect pack called the Shockwave Effects Pack. And what it has is a series of visual effects that can be spawned and generated. And they have been made in Unreal Engine's particle system or up-to-date effects system called Niagara. 
Now, visual effects designers are an entire industry in their own right. This is why game development moves from place to place to place, and there are many actors in it. So I myself could not take the time to do this. I could have learned, but instead of doing that, I hired another VFX artist who had already done these effects from scratch, and I just came here and for 50% off, because there's a 50% sale on the Epic Games Store, I was able to get this thing for about 14 something. I can't remember how much exactly it was. So I go ahead and I attach one of the emitters by default right here. And this particular emitter, if we open it up in the emitting uh, system, you're going to see that it spawns a whole bunch of particles as a shockwave. So that's exactly what it is I wanted it to do. So on that code, I just basically am saying that once we have this overlap event, I want to check if it's a player character. I want to spawn this particle and I specifically said I want the particle to be located in the location of our player character and then I want to launch the character. So that's pretty much what my code is saying. I have some extra code here that I'm not necessarily using. I was trying to figure out if I wanted it to spawn from a specific box item that I attached to the player or from the box that is going to be here but I decided to use it at the player spawn. This may not be the optimized way to do it, but it is what I wanted to do, so we're just going to go with it. Now, to the player character. I had three different units that I used to start off my um, prototyping. I tried different methodologies and so on and so forth, but the very first thing that I wanted to do was to actually activate my input. So coming to the engine, all you got to do is you go to Edit and you go to end, uh, Project Settings. This is one of the very interesting things where you can make some edits into the engine and modify some really cool stuff. And under inputs, I created myself an input called Mystic Leap. And if you actually hold down the gamepad right trigger, which is R2 on any gamepad button, or the key R on the keyboard, then it's going to trigger Mystic Leap. Now, on triggering Mystic Leap, there are many different options. We could spawn that spirit pad, which is supposed to launch the character. If you remember, the spirit pad is this little thing that if I were to land on it, my character flies in the air. And so I started out with that as a prototype, and eventually I got to hopping all over the place. It was a lot of fun, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys right now what it kind of looks like in one space. So you hold down that button, and then you're just hopping around. Whoopee! Whoopee, and then you're generating that uh, visual effect as well as you're going. And so that was one thing that I actually started out with. And it was quite exciting to get to that point. And, you know, you could see that, you know, the way it actually flows is fun because as you're solving the problems, and this took hours, by the way, uh, you start to gain a little bit more excitement on how your project is looking. The second thing that I did and the second option is whenever you press R2 on the controller on the keyboard, you can check if the character is falling. And if the character is falling, then you want to spawn that spirit pad. Now, the reason I did this is because usually when the character is in the air, there are different aspects to having to do code for it. You could set up booleans and all of the above, but the character being in the is falling state allows for the game to be able to track for the character while the character is actually falling from some kind of a height distance. So here, if the character is actually going to fall from this height, they'll play an animation while they're doing so. That process of them just falling from top to down is actually being recorded and being tracked by the engine. So that makes your code somewhat less uh, complicated and you could just use those set of parameters to set up all of that so I set one of them up and I did the exact same thing so that condition of the character falling should be the only condition where I can actually spawn that spirit pad and do that while I'm standing right now if I hit the R2 button or if I hit the R key and you just have to believe me that I'm actually hitting them there is no way that this spirit pad is going to spawn but once I enter the in falling state BAM it immediately spawns and then that's where we're going from so you see it that's pretty much how the code is designed to work. And on getting here, I think I went ahead and broke my project, so I had to start all over again. And it was quite interesting and exciting to, <laughs> to figure out how to go back to doing everything again. So it really helped to reinforce, but I'm not going to lie, it was a little inconvenient. 
And then finally, for me to be able to get this thing to work exactly in my mind anyways, how I saw it, because I haven't played it yet. So I can't necessarily give exact one to one representation of how the system is going to work because there are many more elements in the Mystic Leap. And I will talk about that at the end of the video. And I decided that maybe if I were to actually set up my input action Mystic Leap, which is bound to those keys here, which is my R key on the keyboard or the right trigger, I could at least create a parameter where I was holding it down. Because remember, on the skill tree, if you hold it down, then the Mystic Leap eventually starts to kick in place while you're in the air. And so I decided if I hold it down, I created here a hold input thanks to the guys on the internet that teach you how to do this stuff because this is a macro and macros are quite interesting they really make code fun to just look at and then their function here which basically says uh, sorry there's an event here sorry that's fired and that event is to spawn the spirit pad the spirit pad is that function that you guys saw when we check if it's the player if the player is falling we check the you know where the box is and we spawn that spirit pad and we set the spirit pad here basically saying okay this is a spirit pad we could do whatever we want with it we could destroy it we could do all that that's why I set up this variable right here even though I'm not using it at this point point. and then when I release this button I go ahead and I pause a timer function so when I spawn it I set a timer that continues to fire off this particular command if this particular event or command whatever you want to call it and then when I release I pause that timer the event is no longer fired so when Mystic Leap is going down in this particular game, all I have to do is just jump in the air. And once I'm in the air, I spawn it, bam, bam, bam. And I, I'm just making my way across because that is spawning by itself as I hold down any of those buttons. And one thing that I will say is there are a lot of limitations to this particular system. This is a prototype nonetheless. I mean, I'm not in the business of game development yet anyways. I'm still a student, but it's interesting to be able to see these mechanics on uh, preview and try to maybe mimic them or do something that's quite cool in, uh, you know, in just the order for you to be able to say, OK, I think I can get a feel and a handle as to how the developers kind of look at these things from their own you know, lens. Now, again, another thing that you have to say is with the, the Mystic Leap that Red Hood has, he has a lot of other parameters that are built into it. So while he's in he's in the air if you notice from that preview there are parameters for him to be able to locate and at least sense that's in quote an enemy npc that's right below him so he can actually do mystic leap and go directly into a takedown also as he was leaping through the buildings you could see grapple hook points which also seem like it's going to give you a lot more variation when you're leaping you can grapple from a leap or you can leap into a grapple which you saw from the time he finished taking out those guys on the truck and then he continued to make his way through the world so this will allow for all kinds of different fun variations and it wasn't until i started working on this little prototype that i figured out man it's actually going to be much more cooler than we actually thought because you can use it you can grapple make your way start fighting a bunch of guys or do a takedown and i think that's where the variation comes into play a few other things that I'd like to add in this video before I actually sign off is on watching again and trying to follow and mimic this particular system, I got to realize that the visual effects are actually quite interesting in the sense that the color that they picked and the way the camera works. So let me explain both of them. So I remember when this Mystic Leap was first revealed or Red Hood, some people said, you know, I could deal with this, but I just wish the color was red in a sense. And, you know, in my testing, I actually tried to tweak some colors of the VFX to red just so I could maybe make that, you know, variation and kind of show that to the community. But believe it or not, red looked like a really weird color. Maybe it was just the color hues that I picked out. Maybe another visual artist could have probably executed it and made it look much more beautiful. Definitely. I'm not a visual artist. I'm just somebody who's picking up these skills, uh, especially in the side that's outside of programming and gameplay systems. And so I definitely could see why that green really does, uh, you know, become the color of choice because it complements the world. If the world's going to be there at night, it's a really good color to go with. 
another thing too is if you pay very close attention there is camera shake whenever he's actually doing that that's something that i wish i could have added to my project it's not too complicated but i've never really gotten the opportunity to work with it so i wouldn't know how it would have actually affected my entire project but maybe at a later time i can revisit it and then go from there so that's pretty much what this got to going for me and i'm really excited to just share with you guys but i'm really really stoked that i could actually do this because red hood is one of my favorite characters if not who i'm really looking forward to playing but that's going to be batgirl for now and then i probably will go in for red hood so let me hear your thoughts in the comment section thanks so much for watching the video i really appreciate you guys this time and audience and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon peace out